Welcome to the Induna channel. I'm John Riven, producer of marine films including The Blue Planet, and I'm going to be talking with Mark Carwardine, a world-renowned expert on the sea and author of over 100 books including many excellent field guides on whales, dolphins and sharks. And we're going to be discussing mainly the mobula or devil rays, which are these excellent types of manta rays from Mexico. In particular, of course, the mystery of why they seem to fly and jump out of the water. You may be thinking of the flying fish, which is more familiar to everyone. There's about 60 species of those. But actually, the mobula is one of the masters of leaving the water, flipping its body up to six feet high or more in the air. It's a great name, isn't it, Mobula? Yeah. I want to say it again and again, Mobula. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're very special rays. I mean, of all the 650, I think my favorite are the, the mantas and mobulas that are in that little group. So they're related to sharks, actually. Do you know what the amazing thing is, it seems to me, is that they've done what sort of humans have done millions of years later and made an aircraft, an underwater aircraft, out of one wing. I mean, the hydrodynamics of it must be quite interesting. It is, it is extraordinary. I mean, they're, they're basically like flattened sharks. It's like somebody's taken a shark and done a steamroller over the shark and it's squashed. And you've got basically the same design. It's just flat and they have these amazing wings which they, they literally do use to fly underwater. They're most wonderful animals to watch underwater. So they sort of curl up and they, they move with their movements and with the water. It's almost balletic. It's, all, it's really quite captivating to watch. Yeah. So uh, the particular ones that I've seen, and, and, and I know you see because you go to your favourite place, which is uh, Baja. Tell us about that. Well, um, yes, Baja, Baja, California, in Mexico, has to be one of my favourite places on the planet. I've been going there for, I think it's 31 years now. Are they, aren't they going to call it California, California now? Yeah, well, maybe. <laughs> I think the Gulf is called the Gulf of California at the moment, so Donald Trump will like that. Probably won't change that. Or the Sea of Cortez is the other name for the same place. It's this, it's this huge sea surrounded by Mexico, on the Pacific coast of Mexico. Baja California is a, well, if you look on a map, it looks like a giant chili. It's about 800 miles long from the, the, the southern border of California. Giant chili? That's appropriate for Mexico, isn't it? I know, it is very appropriate. Um, and then on the sort of inside, the gap between Baja California and the Mexican mainland, if you like, is this amazing sea, the Gulf of California, or Sea of Cortez, which and many years ago, Jacques Cousteau described it as the aquarium of the world because it had such an extraordinary variety of marine life and this amazing bounty, just a huge number of everything. And I, I, I love the place because I've been going for years whale watching, table, taking people to see you know, everything from uh, blue whales to grey whales to uh, sperm whales and many others in between. But there are many surprises along the way, all sorts of other marine creatures. I would love to talk to you about all the other creatures, particularly the whales. I know we once flew over 15 species of whales in a, in a week, didn't we, down there? But um, specifically, what I've found recently is some extraordinary video uh, by a cameraman called Alfredo Barroso, who um, filmed the mobula rays, which are the smaller brown ones, jumping out of the water. I mean, just literally leaping, perhaps even up to 15 feet out of the water. Have you seen that? Oh my God, yeah, many, many times. This is one of the highlights. It's very funny, when you take people to Baja, they want to see the blue whales and all the big things. And then when you've had an encounter with one of these rays, devil rays, uh, that suddenly becomes the, one of the highlights of the holiday. And nobody even thought about it. Nobody would expected it or hoped for it. it. It's just a surprise. And we come across them on most trips, I have to say, um, we go in the winter, which is when most of the whales are around, and it seems to be a good time to see them in February, March, April. So, just a little factoid here. The reason they're called devil rays is because they've got two horn-like things at the front. They're a modified type of scoop-shaped fin. Mantas, devil rays, or mobula, are all filter feeders scooping up plankton, and these horns help direct the plankton into their mouths. But even more surprising 
is that they have been found to communicate with them, using various ways of furling and unfurling each side. They curl up when they're responding to other mobula, and it's thought this could even be a greeting. In cleaning stations, specific places where the mantas go to get cleaned, they even communicate with the cleaning fish using these lobes. And as you can see, it appears to be showing the cleaning fish where and where not to clean. And the wonderful scientific name for these horns is cephalic lobes. The one that, that we're interested that leaps a lot, that you've got the video of there, is um, called a monk's M-U-N-K apostrophe as monk's pygmy devil ray. Um, there are other rays, um, including manta rays, actually the biggest of the lot in the Sea of Cortez, and they all jump out of the water occasionally, just once, and they're gone. But what's special about the monk's pygmy devil rays is that they leap out of the water a lot and multiple times. You've got the most wonderful aerials of them too. And tell me, when those aerials, can you explain why they jump out of the water? Oh, well, that's the... The, the question, I mean, they, they um, I was going to say the Mexican fishermen, the local fishermen there, called them flying tortillas. I think that's a much better name. It captures it perfectly. So what, what you see from the air, and I've watched them many, many times from drones and a few times from light aircraft, is you see a group of these rays close to the surface, all swimming along in the same direction, sometimes swimming around in a circle. And the, generally the ones on the outside of the group are the ones that leap. And you can watch it from the boats as well. They don't seem to be bothered by boats at all. So if you creep up, you can get really close to these schools. And they'll leap, sometimes once, sometimes twice, up to four times. And they don't just leap. What's, what they, one of the clues is what might be going on is they, they leap out of the water. Some of them do a back flip, uh, back somersault, and land with a splash on their backs. Sometimes they just leap out and do a belly flop on their front. But they, they don't just land on the water, they seem to smack onto the water. It seems to be a real effort to make a big, loud splash, a loud sound. And you can hear them from a long way off when it's a calm day. If you're on a boat and you just cut the engines, you can hear this, like this, as they hit the water. And um, one of the clues may be that that may produce a sound or, or vibrations in the water. Have you, have you got one of them with you there? That sounded pretty realistic. <laughs> yeah, well, that's exactly what it sounded like. It sounded like claps. And in fact, many times I've been with people on the boat watching this, and it's such a spectacular performance that people can't help but applaud. So you've got the mobular rays doing this, and the people on the boat, well, doing that with the <laughs> As you say, sometimes you know, 14, 15 feet out of the water. So, so they're making a lot of noise. Um, at why are they doing it? Some people would say perhaps to get rid of parasites or something. Well, you can imagine it's one of those things that lots of interesting theories, possibly dislodging parasites um, and remoras. They have a lot of these remora fish stuck to them, which, which must be annoying, even though they're eating some of the parasites and, and keeping the animals clean. You know, they're of weight and they, they must be very annoying and tickly. So that's one theory. Um, playing isn't impossible. I mean, which is extraordinary to say about fish. Well, you, know, you say that, Mark, but you know what? I, I did, a, did a, a, some filming in the Azores and behind us, we were, we, we were trailing in a little underwater aluminium aeroplane on which we'd had a camera. We were trying to go down into the deep sea, but while we were in the surface, a manta ray, followed this thing and it looked a little bit like another manta ray this this model that we'd put in the water and it was really interested in it it was obviously very intelligent it, you know it, it was it was trying to suss it out well i can i can totally believe that i mean mobulars and mantas have the biggest brains of all the fish they're they're disproportionately large for their size they're complex i mean they're comparable to many mammals so play certainly isn't impossible i mean there are other theories like having um, communication but to say you know, they make an effort to make a really loud splash. What that communication is about, I'll come to in a minute. But in, um, it may be to bring other ones in for feeding. I mean, they do cooperatively hunt. And it seems that the more of them there are feeding on schools of um, krill and other small plankton, the more successful they are. Um, they do leap around a lot and spin around a lot underwater and do back somersaults and so on. And maybe if there's 
near the surface they come out but because they do it multiple times that's unlikely so the official explanation at the moment is that it's a form of courtship um, I don't actually believe that um, because when you watch them from the air as I say it's only the ones on the outside that are leaping the outside of the school and all the others are just swimming along with their noses in the air pretending to take no notice so if it's a form of courtship it doesn't seem to work do you think it is the females that are leaping or is it the males? It's impossible to tell. I mean, that's part of the theory is that the females leap and they're followed by males. I've watched them many, many times from the drones and I've never seen any reaction by the others to a leap. You see the, the mobulars and they, them leaping. You put a drone up and it's a relatively small school and they leap and leap and leap and you might stay with them for, you know, two, three hours. But as you watch, the school grows quite rapidly. And, and I've seen schools that probably number, I'm not kidding, tens of thousands of these mobular rays. So my theory is that the leaping attracts other rays from the whole area. The school builds up, but when it gets to a certain critical size, what you see is they start swimming around in a circle really quite fast. And I think that's when they start courting and mating. So it's to do with courtship, but it's not actually courtship itself. It's to get more mobular rays to come in, join the school, and then basically have one great big orgy. It's a brave thing for a fish to do, to leave its, its watery world, isn't it? And to, and to venture into ours. I wouldn't be surprised if it happened to us, but if they, they've leapt into people's boats and so on, because they'll leave right next to the boat. Yes, and of course, um, things like flying fish do it. There's, there's quite a big species, I think, it's in the Gulf of California or Sea of Cortez, and that, you know, goes for hundreds of yards out of the water. They can keep going. They come down and they flick their tails and they do another leap so they can, they can um, keep flying for a long, long time. But they're doing it to escape predators. Uh, uh, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, um, whales, of course, do it probably for another reason, although... The, the thump that a humpback worm makes is reminiscent of what you said about the mobulars trying to make a noise. Well, yes, yeah, certainly in some situations, and a whale's breach for lots of different reasons depending on where they are, but communication is almost certainly one of them. And uh, you can hear that slap from miles away on a calm day from, on a boat. So underwater, you'd be able to hear it from even further. Before we uh, finish this, just tell me how beautiful Baja is. I know um, Steinbeck wrote about it and said some extraordinary things. He said that the mountains have a, have a brooding kind of hallucination, which is uh, amazingly poetic. If you've been to Baja and then you see photographs of the Baja Peninsula, you know, behind a leaping whale or leaping mobulars or whatever, you'll recognise it as Baja immediately. Very, very distinctive backdrop to everything. It's a, it's a desert peninsula, um, but a very distinctive sort of mountainous desert um, with a few cacti growing around the place. It's sort of got a, a reddy brown colour. It reflects the light, doesn't it? I mean, it's different colours at different times of day. It turns pink on a beautiful evening. You know, the light goes... I've never seen it quite like it anywhere else in the world. The light is a, a really beautiful deep pink and the mountains turn pink, the water does. And wherever you happen to be, I spend most of my time there at sea, um, there'll be something near you, whether it's leaping mobular rays or a couple of inquisitive whales or a you know, hammerhead shark swimming alongside or sea lions. There's just so much light. And despite the decline since Steinbeck's time, he, he wrote a book called Voyage to the Sea of Cortez, 1941, I think. And, uh, you know, it was abundant, much more abundant than it is today. But... There seem to be still thousands and thousands of these mobulars. Well, it is changing. I mean, it, that's the true of everywhere in the world. There's there's huge amounts of fishing in the Sea of Cortez. And, um, you know, in the last count, I think there were 26,000 boats catching fish in the Sea of Cortez. And the, the mobular rays are now being targeted, sadly. They're being targeted for the dried gill plate. So they have these gill rakers that they breathe and feed through and they're now in demand in Asian medicine in many parts of the world. So fishermen are targeting these rays, sadly, and they're slow breeders. You know, they have, a, have one single pup every two or three years. So if a population gets hammered by fishermen, it takes a long time for it to recover. 
if it's ever given the chance to recover. So, nevertheless, the, the the film that you and Alfredo took shows them in their thousands, if not tens of thousands. So, I guess they're still hanging on in there. Yeah, we still see them. We see them less often. Um, they're certainly not as common as they used to be, but it's all relative. If you were go there for the first time, you'd be blown away by the abundance of everything. But I know what it was like 30 years ago, so you can see a difference. Okay, well, it's the it's still the home of the mobula. It sure is. It's, it's worth going just to see Mug's pygmy devil rays leaping out of the water, if nothing else. <laughs>